Hi, I'm Jeff Hughes. I'm from Madhouse Media, and you're listening to the eBook Revolution. And on the line, I'm talking to Mary Egan, who is just living the dream and released her first eBook called Tale of a Barefoot Tomboy. And um, it's taken Mary a while to get there, but she's finally embraced the independent publishing path and published her first book. Tell me about your path to becoming a writer, Mary. Um, okay, Jeff. Uh, you know, I, th- I suppose it started. Um, I, I spent um, thirty years in in corporate roles as a, a strategist and a marketer, um, and um, not doing what I would consider writing. But when you are a marketer, you you do a lot of advertising copy. You, I, I managed a you know a group in a number of different contexts. We would be writing. You know, advertising copy, copy, which would be, you know, in, designed to persuade people to buy things. And, um, uh, you know, through that process, I realized I was doing a lot of writing and, um, and editing as well. And um, most people in, in you know, the marketing profession or advertising view that as a big chore to, um, to work through the copy and get it just right make sure it's persuasive and has the right tone and all that stuff. And I was actually finding I really enjoyed it. And I, you know, I thought I'm going to see, you know, whether writing is something that um, I should be pursuing more fully. So I, um, I went off and I did a, a, you know, just a little community college night school course uh, in Sydney, Australia. And uh, the teacher was lovely. There were, you know, about 15 people in the class. And we did various exercises, but every at the end of each week, we got, it was only one class a week, one night night class a week. She would say, "Bring in some writing, and we'll look at it. You know, bring copies for everyone, and we'll, we'll look at it." So by the third week, you know, no one had brought anything in, and I, I started to take pity on her. It was an eight-week course, and I, I actually felt a bit sorry for the the you know the teacher because she was you know looking for this from us. So. Um, I wrote something, you know, I brought it in um, uh, and, you know, you really have a ready-made writer's group there um, in a class like that. Um, so they read my my short story and I sat there and watched and waited while they read it, you know, the, the yes. 12 or so students in the class, which that, was a very... That's always long. fun. <laughs> Sorry? That's always fun, <laughs> waiting for the first feedback. Oh, yeah, yeah. It felt like an expectant um, father waiting in the waiting room. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, you know, got the feedback. The feedback was good. Um, uh, the, you know, it was it was nice to have someone say, oh, I really liked how you said this, you know, like they actually pick out a specific line. Um, that's that is quite thrilling, I think, as a writer. So um, that got me hooked on it, basically. And it, and it taught me two things, you know, in the writer's journey. One is you can't be a writer if you don't write. <laughs> so I mean, that's, that's the one. obvious. <laughs> but, but many people take courses about writing, but um, perhaps don't write as often as, as they could or should. Um, and the other one is you've got to show it to someone, you know. Uh, ultimately, um, your writing for creative expression um, if you want to make the step to publishing something, clearly you have to be comfortable enough to show it to people. And, and that was that, those were the first two steps of many on the writer's journey, I suppose. No, you're quite right. I remember when I, um, I was studied creative writing at uni back in the day, but I can remember walking into the class um, in semester one, year one, and the writing teacher... Um, published poet by the name of John Hughes, I think, no relation, but the first thing he said was, if you can't stand the thought of people reading and discussing your work, then turn around and leave and then sign up for another course. And, <laughs> and he, was, he was quite yeah, right. absolutely. You've got you know, you to show it, show it to someone, otherwise it's a very private matter indeed. It's more like a diary, I suppose. Yeah, That's which it. is another thing on the writer's journey, I suppose, is um, that I I read um, a book called um, uh, the uh, the art spiritual journey of the artist or something. I'm sorry, I, I should know the name of this um, the, or the the artist's journey, the spiritual path, or something like that. Um, and uh, in that book, 
they the one thing I took out of that that was really important was the notion of writing every day. So writing um, a journal or what she called warning pages. Um, and that's another practice which I think is really um, been helpful for me. It, you know, you just write about anything, three pages every day. Um, and uh, it kind of gets the flow going, the flow of writing out from your brain onto the page. Um, right. and, so uh, right. Yeah, it's not an automatic, it's not something you can just turn on and off um, if you don't have practice. Um, but that, that I found to be a really good um, thing as well, um, which I still do to this day. I'm, I'm a big advocate of, of keeping a journal, which I, I do myself. But... Yeah. Yeah, awesome. and um, I've got all of them. Have you kept yours? Sorry, I, I that broke up then. Well, um, no, no worries. I was just asking if you kept have kept all your journals. Like I've got I've got all of them. Start you know from like I think fifteen years ago. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It's yeah. um, yeah, you, know, you just write about your day and what's happening, but it it just it's. Because I'm a I'm a musician as well, and you, you call it keeping your chops up. So if you don't if you don't regularly play your instrument, you lose your chops, and it's much the same with writing, really. Yeah. So when you yeah. actually sit down to writing to write something, if you don't have that rhythm, it's even more difficult. Yeah. But I do I do subscribe to the and I advise any, any new writer if if you want to do it, just write, just do it. Find the time, ten minutes a day, twenty minutes a day. And it just becomes a rhythm. Make a part of yes. your day. Yes, indeed. Yeah, agreed. So your, your first book, Tale of a Barefoot Tomboy, um, I, I should disclose right <laughs> right out of the gate, I, I helped help Mary uh, produce and publish this. And it's uh, been a joy of a project. And um, yeah. we're, we're just out of the first gate. But... Um, Stevie and I are very thankful, Jeff. <laughs> tell, me, tell me how all this came about, the tale of the barefoot tomboy. Well, yeah, um, the tale is um, a fictionalised account of uh, something that happened, uh, that actually happened. And um, it happened to me, but then I took the, that, that event and then, you know, created a character. And, and what would happen if, if it went beyond what occurred to me so um it it did uh, i was seven years old when it occurred um but uh it, it's about a child um you know roaming free i suppose in in horseshoe bay which is a little community in uh, british columbia uh so you know end of summer and um some uh, some very bad people um abduct the child and um and, and how how that 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 child, the uh, girl named Stevie Trumbley, um, copes with that and what she does. Um, she's a she's a tomboy. She's quite resourceful and and physical and strong and brave. So um, it's about it's about her and how she how she um, she copes with that that um, setback and, and and how she gets home. It's a very dark theme for a children's book. Um, what what may Made you a choose um, children's fiction in the first place, and uh, the dark theme itself is, is it just is it just writing from life, like the old thing, write write about what you know, or have you always? Yeah, I suppose, yeah it, it is dark in that there are you know bad people about. There are bad people about, and um, you know we know this um, as parents that. Um, um, and children, children know it too. Um, uh, they, they're certainly, you know, coached on it at school. Um, um, you know how to how to address it. <clears throat> and but I, I, yeah, it is dark that there's danger in the world. But, but I, I, I hope that the story's uplifting in terms of the way that the the main character um, deals with that, um, which uh, which I think um, is not dark. Um, but yeah, there there is danger. Um, but, but I think um, any story should have dark and light um, attributes. You know, otherwise, it's not very suspenseful. You know, look at Harry Potter; it's full of darkness. Um, no, that's but it's true. Very and, uplifting. Yeah. And the character Stevie is certainly very resourceful and resilient, and 
definitely not of the um, uh, PlayStation generation, which is uh, very refreshing. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's a low to- a low tech unplugged um, her- heroin as opposed to uh, you know somebody with um, superpowers and uh, <laughs> flying in a spaceship or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> and that and that of course in- informs your whole thing around a, a tomboy manifesto. Can you tell me a bit more about that? Um, yeah, I, I, um, I, I suppose, uh, yeah, I am a, a feminist. Uh, I'm going to just put, put that out there. Um, I, I love to see girls um, and women embrace um, uh, a, a life of adventure um, and, uh, and to be uh, physical, uh, to, you know, you know, in, in, enjoy and explore the wonderful athleticism of their bodies, um, not to be constrained by fashion and, you know, uncomfortable things that get strapped on that then make it impossible for you to really enjoy your life or enjoy adventure. So, yeah, I, and I think there's a lot of material out there that's um, about that other type of female experience, which is, you know, the spiky high heels and the fluffy dresses and the teetering around between parties. Um, and I think that's all great. And, I, you know, and all women and girls enjoy that too. But don't forget that, you know, there's this, there's this lioness inside that uh, can go out and enjoy life, um, you know, boldly. So, yeah. So uh, just, just to, as a counterpoint, I suppose. No, I, I I have three daughters, and they they certainly grew up tomboys. So <laughs> reading the story resonated with me as well. But- yeah, it, it's um it's uh it just what it, it is it is important, and I know girls know this, but it's wonderful to to know that that that's that's an aspect of their character that they can explore without without feeling um, that it's you know it's inappropriate or unattractive. It is an attractive aspect of their their being. So the the character Stevie, what plans do you have for her? Yeah, Stevie's um, Stevie's going. Sorry, you all right? I heard a whoops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have more books planned for Stevie? More plans? Oh, sorry, I heard I heard whoops. Um, yeah, um, absolutely, Stevie. The tale of a barefoot tomboy is will be the first of um, a, a series. Um, I, I can certainly envisage um, a couple of, uh, like, a, a, there's four more stories I'd like to tell about her. Um, she'll probably get a little bit older um, each time in each of the stories. Um, and um, I'd like to explore an, a different aspect uh, of the the culture and the world and the wilderness um, and the physical location um, of of uh, British Columbia, Canada, but also um, areas around, um, you know, sort of get explore um, aspects of of, um, of the culture around her, which um, um, includes some very interesting things. You know, Canada is a, a you know mixing pot of of uh, cultural elements like French Canadian. Um, indigenous peoples, um, uh, Irish, and, and and so on. So um, I'd like to kind of bring some of those aspects into into the mixing pot if I can. So you you grew up in British Columbia. Yes. Um, how, how how much of your um, life story, apart from what we touched on with the actual plot of the book, um, informs the character of Stevie? Uh, Stevie's um, much more um, uh, amazing than I am. <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm a humble, a humble being compared to Stevie. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think any writer, um, you know, writes from what they know, and um, I, I've said it in a time that I know, um, and many readers will know. Like certainly the parents of of the young girls and boys that might read the story will will know that time. Um, so uh, it's actually quite a, you know, there's a lot of filmmakers and writers that are starting to touch on the, mm. 
60s as a, a time of uh, important, you know, like a nostalgic time with some very interesting, you know, certainly Mad Men was, was one of the, was, oh, was one of was, you know, um, it's a very intriguing period of time of social change, technology change, cultural change. Um, and there's a lot of that. It's a very interesting backdrop, actually. So um, so that's the intention is to um, to carry forward with that um, and and um, and explore that. And of course, I, I also like to bring the United States into, you know, our, our neighbors, uh, Canadian neighbors, uh, the United States into the mix there as well, because um, and I did with this first book, Tale of Barefoot Tomboy. She actually, um, it doesn't just stay in British Columbia. She ends up in, in uh, Washington. One, one thing I enjoyed reading the book was um, the, the, the way you evoke a sense of place uh, as well of time. But, yeah, it's obviously you, you grew up in that area and you knew it very well, but the, the way you write about place and landscapes is um, very evocative. Was, was, was that deliberate? Yeah, I, I, I really, I want the character to um, be extremely well connected with nature um, because I think that's part of um, uh, what a, you know, a, a person, a, a tomboy or a boy who's connected with adventure um, and, and the physical natural world. You know that it that is an it's a magical a magical experience as a young person to actually um, go out and see the world. You know, play in the streams. You know, swing on the trees, climb up the rock face, whatever it is. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a very very powerful you know heady thing to experience as a child. So and and you know the the memory of that stays with you for your entire life. So um, yes, absolutely. Um, I uh, I would like to continue to write about that, and I and I you know I guess I'm hoping that readers will um, explore that themselves, um, be encouraged to explore that themselves. It's been a, a very impressive um, debut for you. Um, you must be very pleased to finally get it out and about. But what what would be your your one piece of advice to to new writers who who want to um, get a book published but they they never quite get their act together that you know they they they've got half written projects that they never seem to get finished or yeah yeah the, um, I think there's there's probably several things but you know I'll try and be as pithy as I can um, oh you can, you, you can ramble you <laughs> <laughs> I'll be pithy in a rambling way. Okay, uh, we've perfect, had perfect. My trade, probably. <laughs> um, they, um, I would say to anyone, um, the, you know, it, it, I think writing is very much like running a marathon, which I've only done one, but it was a very vivid experience in that, you know, you can almost divide the run into three. The first, you know, the first third, you have to um, you have to be very very careful to pace yourself, um, but you need to just you know uh, obviously keep going. But um, you need to be very mindful that you have to save some for later. You know that this is a very long thing you're going on. This is a long journey, so mm. you run at an even pace. In the middle, you open up a bit and you let you let the, uh, you know, your energy flow and you, you actually push it out a bit there. You, 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 you push the envelope a bit. And in the end, you just finish it any way you can. <laughs> you know, so that's the last third. And I think it's very much like that with uh, writing. But the hard work is, is actually the editing and polishing. It's yeah. not the getting the idea down. Um, uh, but do, you know, you've got to, you've got to do that. So, um, it's 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 definitely people need to set set a time frame that is longer than they probably think it should be. You know, they might think, oh, I can write this in a month, or I can write it in six months. But yeah. you might and you might actually end up putting it down for a while. But you know, and I think that's a valid thing to do too, is to put it down for a while if it's just you know driving you crazy or you're just sick of it, because you can get sick of your own writing. You know, you've got to read it so many times, so you just go, oh my god, I can't read this anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah, but um, the the polishing and editing and um, and revising and thinking is is a critical part of it and has to be done. Otherwise, it never gets to a state where you would even show it to someone. Um, I also think it's very valuable to have somebody review it. I, uh, there's two types. There's two ways you can get something reviewed, and one is that you can have it assessed by, you know, a, a professional um, assessor uh, through a writer center. The other is to get someone to do a copy and proof review, and some of those copy and proof reviewers are mighty good writers in their own. You know, there's a lot of them about. I I, I worked through Elance to get to get mine done. And um, the one thing I'd say about that is I think the value is in the second group, not the former group. Um, I've had, um, you know, Tale of a Barefoot Tomboy is my fourth book, actually. Um, the first one I wrote, um, I went through an assessor um, with the New South Wales Writer Center. And, um, I think that experience was um, expensive and possibly not um, value for money. Um, yeah. It just this is just my opinion. Um, the assessor started uh, trying to rewrite the book. <laughs> they didn't like an aspect of it. They just kept hammering on about how it needed to be taken out. And uh, I don't think that's really, you know, what you what you want. Now, it might have just been that one experience and there's yeah. many excellent assessors out there. But that that's the one thing I would say is you have to get somebody to review the copy um, uh, professionally. And um, it's up to you whether you go with the full assessment or the, um, you know, someone who does a copy and proof. What, what's your experience, Jeff? Have you worked in that space? Well, the, I think the key thing is a, a good editor won't try to rewrite the book. <laughs> no, a, a, exactly. A, a, good, a good editor will make lots of notes on on structure and suggestions, and you take those notes back and. You take them or leave them. Really, it's 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 your story. Yes. And yes. a good editor recognise that. A good ed editor will just offer advice on how it can be better. And it, that's yes. what it is. It's advice. They're, they're not God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but, but, it, but in my experience, ninety percent of the time, the the advice they're giving is spot on. Yeah. But, but, you know, yeah. So definitely, always, you know, you, you need. You need to get an editor, and I think most most people that think, "Yeah, I want to write a book. I want to write a story, even even if it's fiction or nonfiction," they'll have an idea and they'll start bashing it out, and it might take you know a few months or whatever, maybe you know longer, and they finally get to a first draft, and um, <laughs> then they'll do the worst possible thing you could do is is um, just publish it. <laughs> they, they might they might get it proofread and checked for spelling errors, but there's been no review on what the actual content's about. So, yeah, my, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. You've got to you've got to have that distance from it because you yeah. can't you can't have distance if you've been looking at something over and over and over again. You just become oh, you just become blind absolutely. to it, and you know, it's the old thing. You know, you've got to kill your darlings, you know. They... <laughs> and also, you know, a book like a, even a, this is a fairly this is a fairly short novel because it's written for young readers. But even a, something that length is quite a large document um, to to review um, over and over. So yes, by all means, get get a professional to have a look at it. Um, but um, don't be don't be egotistical about it. So take the feedback on board. Not all of it you need to obviously do, but but take it on board because they're they're giving it to you in the spirit of, you know, their professionalism and their opinion. Yeah. Um, but yes, you've got to get you've got to get that done. Um, but no one can write your book. So if you feel strongly about something in your book, and even if someone said, look, you got to take this bit out you know um i i know um you know like a, as an example you know someone like george R. R. martin you know he he was uh he when he was writing uh, songs of fire and ice um he had the dragons in there right yeah. and um i think one of his, the assessors uh, or one of the people looking over it um said you know you got to take these dragons out you know everything else is fine except the dragons <laughs> 
because they're you know they're just ridiculous that nobody believes in that anymore and and, and you know of course it's full of magic that those that series and and so there's even a dedication in his books because um, he he kept the dragons and of course and it, it, the dragons are are awesome <laughs> and uh, we love the dragons <laughs> so uh, good on you George. <laughs> Well, that's the okay. take out. Just, just take the advice, but um, you know, they're 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 not God. They just yeah. they're, they're just writers as well. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, um, it's been lovely talking to you, Mary. I, you're in Prague. The tale of a barefoot tomboy that's now available on Amazon. So, um, if you want to go and grab yourself a copy, just uh, go to Amazon.com and search Mary Egan and you up will pop Tale of the Barefoot Tomboy. But um, also in the podcast notes back on Madhouse Media, there'll be some direct links for you as well if you want to have, have a look at the book. Um, Mary, I understand you've been putting a website together. Is that, that ready? Yeah, that's, yes, um, that's up, uh, Mary Egan Books. Um which is um, dot com. Okay, that's Mary Egan Mary Egan Books dot com. Go and have a look at that, and I'm sure all your Twitter and Facebook handles are on that as well. If people want to get in touch with you and say good day. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, or or in any other language they might wish to say hello. In. <laughs> well, Mary, it's been been a joy talking to you. It's been a it's a wonderful book. I highly recommend it to anybody listening to the podcast. Just, um, yep, um, go back to madhousemedia.com.au slash podcast and you'll get the uh, notes on this podcast. We've been talking to Mary Egan, um, author of Tale of the Barefoot Tomboy. Um, you can also hear this show on Stitcher, uh, Radio On Demand. And um, so pop on over there and rate our show on Stitcher. It's also available on iTunes. I'm Jeff Hughes. This is the ebook Revolution podcast on Madhouse Media. Talk to you next time. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Jeff.